Well, it was the 23rd of December, and uh, two days before Christmas. Beautiful time of the year. Um, you look outside, you can see the Christmas markets, and everyone's going out to, you know, buy something for Christmas. And you know, it's freezing though. It's zero degrees. Temperatures falling. That's okay. You're inside, toasty and warm, sitting on the couch. And we look outside, and just to top it off, the snow begins to fall. And you look at each other. Should I get the candles, or should you get the candles? Well, I'll get the candles. So off I walk, go get the candles from the kitchen, come back out, light them, put them on the table. Jeez, it's romantic, you know. And we think, should we ring the power distribution company? Yeah, okay, we'll give them a call. We give them a call. It's engaged. Hmm, okay. Probably a lot of other people experiencing the same、uh, aspects as well. Okay. So we sit there. An hour passes. Gee, it's getting cold. Temperature outside's falling, and it just so happens that your central heating is electric. You think, okay, we get a blanket. We get closer. Another hour passes. It's now eight o'clock at night. It's pitch black. You're in northern Europe. You look outside, and now what you can see is this eerily blackness. But you start to see these little glows where people have started lighting fires because they're freezing. Starting to get a little bit worried now. It's now nine o'clock at night. You're actually freezing. You've actually lit the match and you've started to burn furniture. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the power distribution company, the operators are seeing these mouse cursors just go across their screen, helpless to change it. And what they're seeing unfold in front of them is businesses and homes, hospitals, just being taken off the power grid, one by one. This is more than just a blackout. Now they've lost control. What I've just told you isn't the beginning of a Tom Clancy novel. It is actually a real live event of a sophisticated cybersecurity attack that happened in 2015 in the Ukraine. They took a quarter of a million people off the grid, which included hospitals. What is a cyber attack? What do we consider a cyber attack? And I'll put it to you: the majority of people here today will be thinking, "Well, that's an IT thing. It's information technology. It means something to do with, I don't know, credit card fraud, virus protection." That was that time where I actually did think that I had Nigerian prince that actually did have money to give me, so I clicked on it. And in that arena, the worst-case scenario you're probably going to have is you're probably going to lose some money, you might lose some data, but it's not normally fatal, unless you're involved in a certain online dating application and you got home and your partner found out, it might have turned fatal then. <laughs> but in an operational technology domain, this is where we're talking about utilities, our oil and gas. In that arena, things can get fatal very quickly. All I have to do is start changing some sensors remotely, in the comfort of my own home, and start causing gas explosions, start poisoning water, all from a distance. So you're probably thinking, "Is、oh, this real? I haven't really heard of this." Yes, it is real.、Uh, it's happening all the time. What you find, though, in this arena, in the operational technology domain. All these attacks are linked to major corporations, and the last thing that they want to do is put up their hand and say, "You know what? We've been a victim of a cyber attack." Because guess what happens? The other cyber criminals out there go, "Oh, there's a soft target. I'm going to go attack them," and so they keep it to themselves. They work on the principle: if we can contain it, it won't escalate. This year alone, it's predicted that we'll spend 96 billion dollars in cybersecurity, affecting about 3.5 million dollars per business. You put that in perspective, majority of businesses cannot handle a 3.5 million dollar loss. So this is quite serious. As high as 63 percent of all intrusions into your network are through a compromised account. What does that mean? Well, it means we've got poor passwords. Some people think I need something I can remember easily. How about one, two, three, four, five, six? Maybe a bit more complicated. Let's go password. 
That'll get them. <laughs> but those kind of passwords is what's causing that vulnerability. We're also seeing this curiosity that killed the cat syndrome. We're seeing people who get these emails, and for a minute you believe that you do have a dead aunt in in the UK that has left you an inheritance, and you think, oh, I wonder what happens if I click. Yeah, I'll click it. And in that split instant, that's where the vulnerability occurs. And so, I find as a community, we've started to give up our privacy for convenience. We've let devices come into our normal homes, such as smart TVs, smart fridges. We need a smart fridge because we don't know when we've ran out of milk now, but the fridge will tell us. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it will appear on your doorstep, and you go, "Oh, thanks, milk, awesome." But is that a convenience, or is that just open a, a vulnerability into your house? Is that literally open the front door and let the cyber criminal in? I'm not saying that we have to give up technology. What I'm saying though is we have to be vigilant about a technology. You're probably thinking, "Well, I don't have a smart TV. I definitely don't have a smart fridge, and I rarely use the internet. Does this affect me?" This year. This company called the Kimiri Water Company. There was an attack on their network. The cyber criminal managed to gain access through a web-facing payment application, and then gain 2.5 million customer records, which includes things like credit cards and your personal details. But that's just the start of it. What they managed to do next was to pivot into their operational technology. Into their on-site plant. From there, they were able to start manipulating the valves on-site, changing the chemical composition of purifying water, effectively holding the company at ransom, or will start poisoning all your clients and customers. It's devastating. They're doing this at home remotely. Faceless. So, are businesses prepared? Are we prepared in that commercial environment for cyber attacks? Recent studies show that as high as 40% of all attacks on our networks go undetected for days, weeks, months, years, or not even detected at all. We do things like fire drills. Yep, when we all get together and we go for a nice walk out and get some sunshine. Before we go, we grab our cup of coffee and make sure we've got our handbag and our keys, and make sure we, if it goes for too long, we can go home. <laughs> But how many cybersecurity drills do we do? Not many. So, who is this cyber criminal I talk about? Surely it's somebody with a, a dark hood, you know, and they're sitting in a dark room, and they sit really close to the computer screen, and they do this all day. Well, no. It's everyone from a 16-year-old kid downloading 90 gig worth of sensitive files, and I'll put it to you that individual was really trying to impress Apple to get a job, <laughs> right through to nation-state. And so, in that broad category of people, it's nearly impossible to defeat. What knowledge do you want about cybersecurity attacks? Are you better off not knowing? If your utilities had a cyber attack, do we pay the ransom? Who decides do we pay the ransom? Do companies have the structure in place in order to make that decision? Do you? Should you? Would you punish a company by taking your business elsewhere? If you know they've been through a cyber attack, our complacency opens up the doors and creates the vulnerabilities that the cyber criminal is looking for. The good news is, though, is that us as a community, through collaboration and education, we can minimise this effect of a cybersecurity attack. We live in a very highly connected environment now. We've got this lovely device called the internet, which is great to be able to go online, do online shopping. 
but it also creates a point of about 32 milliseconds from the furthest part of the world to the other furthest part of the world. So in this changing landscape, we really need to unite and understand our collective responsibilities in able to defeat this cybersecurity threat. And then maybe, just maybe, we might be able to keep the lights on. Thank you.